Mark Twain said it best in his quote, whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. And these are just the craziest times. Uh, we talk about an impending recession and it was, uh, it's like a, a foregone conclusion that'll happen, but what if it isn't? And what if we've actually already entered into a bull market? So let's just take a look at the possibility that we're already in a bull market moving forward. And before I talk about that and talking about strange times, you may have noticed that uh, today, Dogecoin took a little bit of a, a pump. And the question is, why did Dogecoin go up so much? Well, there's a nice little tweet from Elon Musk as he was having a discussion with uh, chairman at WSBC chairman. <laughs> he said, is a new platform needed just by Twitter and change the bird logo to a Doge? And that's what you'll see. If you go to Twitter right now, you'll see that the Dogecoin logo uh, is up in the top or left-hand corner instead of the normal Twitter logo. So does that mean that there's been new development as far as Dogecoin? Does that mean that it's been uh, reevaluated or put into uh, some kind of uh, big business and uh, is there for test transactions or just full transactions? No. In all honesty, nothing's happened. So what does that mean for the price? Well, the market cap's doing pretty good and Dogecoin just went up 18% in 24 hours or 35% in seven days. So uh, these are strange times and just be aware that just because something is pumping doesn't mean like it is the end all be all. So to get to the point of today's story, it comes down to this. This is from Bitcoin Archive. And they said, Bitcoin has just closed up for three months in a row. This is signal the start of a new bull market three times without fail. And I thought about this. I took a look and it's of course, yeah, it's right there, you know, three months straight. It looks like things are moving the right direction. And I thought to myself, well, let's define what a bull market is. And this is from the street. A bull market, as defined by different uh, analysis or analysts, is a period in which stock prices on major indexes like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average are rising, a time when the economy is growing, consumer confidence is high, and people are spending. An official bull market is a period when the S&P 500 increases at least 20% after two distinct declines of 20 so that got me thinking, what's the S&P 500 doing? Because it all kind of comes down to this. And we can see that the S&P 500 is actually doing pretty well for today, but that's not just what the bull run is. It's over a time period. So let's take a look at five days. Looking pretty good. And let's take a look at one month. All right, still pretty good. Let's take a look at six months. Still doing pretty darn good over the last six months. So if we go back here, the S&P 500, Dow Jones are rising. The next, that'll be the first criteria. The second criteria is the official bull market is a period when the S&P 500 increases at least 20% after two distinct declines of 20%. So for that, we'll have to go out a little bit more. Let's take a look at a year. So again, time frames you can cherry pick and do whatever you want to. But if you take a look at the last year or so, April 4th, 2022, a year ago, you can see that we, had, we were at 45.82. And at the very bottom in June, just a couple of months later, roughly about 20%, 19, 20% somewhere, somewhere around there. That's the first one, August 16th, 43.05, and then to, to the base layer, 35.85. Now that is not 20%. It's uh, somewhere a little bit below that, but we are pretty darn close. So that might hit the first criteria. And the next question was this, a time when the economy is growing. Well, if we take a look over at Ben's site, this is why I like Ben's site, because he has it broken down into crypto, macro, and equity. So I steal as much stuff from him as I possibly can. It makes my, my job a heck of a lot easier. Everything's right here. So the real gross domestic product, RGDP, it's equal to the GDP that is adjusted for inflation. That's why I picked this one. RGDP is an inflation-adjusted monetary measure of the market value of all goods and services produced by labor and property in a specific time by certain countries. In this specific example, we're gonna go with the United States. And we can see that, uh, Real GDP has been going up for quite some time, 2015, 18, 19. We took a little bit of dip here in that thing called coronavirus. I don't know if you heard about that. It was a big thing. And then here we are at the tippy top and we're still going up. So I find this quite interesting. Of course, it does go and go to October. Well, we've seen a little bit of a growth. Now, the next part, it talks about this. Consumer confidence is high. So for this one, I took a look at the Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. This refers to the overall attitude or feelings of consumers about the economy and their own financial well-being. 
And we can see that uh, we're not as high as, say, in February 2000, <laughs> which there was a lot of things going on then, uh, or over here in 2004, or in the good old days of 2017, when things are going pretty well, or 2020. But we took quite a drop off, not too far away, June 20, 2022, like we just took, took a look at S&P 500. But where are we going? Well, the sentiment is actually going up quite a bit as of February 23, the consumer sentiment 67. And then the last one is people spending. So for this one, I picked personal consumption expenditures. What is that? Personal consumption and expenditures is the estimated total of consumer spendings, PCE, including how much is spent on durable goods, products that do not wear out quickly, and non-durable goods, products that typically last anywhere less than three years, as well as services. So everything you want to think about is what people are spending on. And again, we can see it here. We've got a straight up hoppy, hockey stick until that time with coronavirus. Then a little bit of a, of, of a uh, downward slide in November 2020. Now here we are, June, July, blah, blah. February 23, again, still going up in a line. So if I take a look at this and I say, okay, well, that would define the bull market. But what Bitcoin Archive is talking about is that it's just closed up for three months in a row. So again, if I take a look at these things, here's the Bitcoin monthly return tables. And we can see that they are spot on. It has been one, two, three. And I got to tell you, for 2023, we've had some monstrous months. Thank you for all the, big, for all the banks that are collapsing. Not good for people, I understand but it is good for Bitcoin because it makes people realize that, hey, nothing's safe. So you got three months here. If we take a look at 2022, there wasn't three months in a row, so that wouldn't hit that criteria. In 2021, remember that year? Oh, that was a, that was a good year. What do we have here? One, two, three. And a little bit of a sideways action. 2020, no. 2019, we did have three months in a row, actually five months in a row. And it was a little bit choppy, but this was a good year to accumulate, I felt. And of course, going in 2020, nothing there, and then 2021. 2018, 2017, there was three. April, May, June. Remember what happened 2017 to December? That was its all-time high for that cycle. And then the next one would be 2013, down here, and then 2012, which is kind of a little, little odd data. But if you just take a look at what they're talking about, it could be. Now, does that mean without a, a shadow of a doubt that we are definitely in a bull run? That's not what I'm saying. But there is a case to be made that maybe we are in some type of bull run. Does that mean that I'm going to change my strategy and dump in everything right now? Me personally, no. I can't give you investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But I got to tell you, I mean, every time that we think that things are going to happen a certain way, market just reacts a little bit differently. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also, just as a reminder, uh, Ben Seitz, the reason I use it so much because it's it's well put together and makes my my life a lot easier. So my favorite one is the indicator summary, and it just kind of takes a look at the risk level for when you can buy and sell crypto and breaks down my Bitcoin, Ethereum, all that great stuff, right? Makes it very simple. And it's also good just to do your own research because the things that I talk about, maybe there's something that you want to take a look at, especially with the macro environment or even the crypto or equities. So I highly recommend it. I mean, I use it every single day. Right now, he's having a sale. And then with my link in the description, you get 10% off for the first month. So take that as you will. But uh, thanks, Ben, for letting me steal your stuff. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments section. And then it's not just about Bitcoin. I know we talk a lot about Bitcoin in this channel, but you know there are some good things going on in the crypto world, like with Algorand. I don't talk about that much. I own Algorand, so just so you know, I am also biased. But uh, this is a good article about how an Argentinian airline, they're using Algorand for all of their tickets as an NFT. I thought this was a pretty good idea to save money. So this is what's happening. Uh, airline low-cost airline Flybondi is integrating Web3 in its ticketing process by issuing e-tickets as NFTs. New integration announced Thursday is called Ticket 3.0. It's, it's a pretty good title. I like that one. The NFT ticket technology built on the Algorand blockchain allows passengers to change their name, transfer or sell their NFT tickets independently. It offers more flexible experience, allows passengers to buy in advance without having to define their travel plans or who their travels will be, which is pretty cool because if you, you can't just go to like Southwest Airlines and just buy a ticket for some time in the future. You have to actually pick the dates. 
In return, the airline is able to reduce customer service costs and increase its revenue from trading fees. Again, great, great way to do things because if you're using the old rails, uh, there's a lot of fees for that. MasterCard Visa. Company does not charge a fee when users initially purchase a ticket, but it does receive a 2% transaction fee when trades are made on the secondary market. Again, if you go ahead and sell it and do whatever you want to do, and that's just a free market. Airlines also get a 2% cut. So again, Algorand, which is uh, incredibly inexpensive to use right now. Does that mean it's going to uh, be the next great thing? I don't know. That's why I've invested a little bit into it, but I've also done a little diversification for quite a bit of crypto. So there, Algorand might be a good one. And then lastly, just a second to last, I should say, to finish this up, uh, Elizabeth Warren. So I just wanted to put this out there because we did a video recently about Elizabeth Warren. She's up for re-election in 2024. U.S. senators, they, they get to serve for six years and they're up for re-election. Her original one was 2012. So <clears throat> what she was basing her campaign on was an anti-crypto army. And then she sat down with Chuck Todd and she was talking about why she's so anti-crypto. This has been in 30 seconds. I want you to listen to it because there's been some specific steps I would like to ask you to take. So just take a listen. With Bitcoin, there's no thing that backs it up. And, and that's what makes it different. It's just belief. You and I assess. You assess the value is going to go down. I assess it's going to go up and therefore... I buy. So it's no. So it's more like this artwork. No, no, because at the end of the day, I can hang that thing on my wall, right? And I can enjoy it, or I can it. throw darts at it. Um, you could sell it for money. Sure, you can. Right. I mean, there are features about it that are the same, but it's it's not the same. And look, one of the things we have to remember about there are a lot of things that come within this crypto world. So, for example. We could be talking about, instead of Bitcoin, we could be talking about digital currency. Now, that's something very different. I think that's different, too. I buy that. I accept that. That's different. right, because yeah. that's a government-backed mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic transfer. And it can be denominated in dollars. It could be denominated in euros. It could be denominated in some new language that's made up. But that has something that backs it up. It has a government that says, if at the end of the day, there's a run on this stuff, everybody wants theirs out, the United States government promises there will be something to back it up. Um, and uh, that's what banks are about. There'll be somebody there to back it up. But with Bitcoin, that's not the case. And then so yeah, that's what you're going to deal with. That's what you're going to deal with when you talk to people who maybe not don't understand it too well. And before we we really, you know, pile on Elizabeth Warren, I just think that and I know people will say, "Rob, you're so naive because you believe in the in the best of people." I do. I just think that she is just horribly misguided because there's a big difference between what she's talking about and what Bitcoin actually does. So, what I was going to ask you to do, if you could help me out, is there is a website and it is called warren.senate.gov. There's a link in the description. Underneath here it says, share your opinion. And what I'd like you to do is just to write to her and tell her why she is wrong on Bitcoin and digital assets. If you need help, good news, I've got something for you. There's this thing. It's called ChatGPT. It's very simple. I'll also link this in the description. And I just gave it a quote. I said, hey, Senator Elizabeth Warren states that Bitcoin and crypto is a fraud. Use too much energy, only used by criminals. What can I send her? And it just spits out this, this beautiful way to say things. If you're struggling with trying to de determine what it is that you want to like, you know, really iron out the things, use chat GPT. Also, I'd like you to put in your own experiences with crypto. But there was also one thing that I do like about chat GPT is, is I can say, hey, give us a good counter argument, a really eloquent one for what Elizabeth Warren is saying. And you know, she said that everything is backed up by uh, the government. And uh, it's so great. Well, in the last part here, I love this, <clears throat> how it spits it out. I'm going to start in reverse. And ChatGPT says, look, finally, the decentralized nature of Bitcoin means it's not subject to, any, to the control of any government or financial institution, which can be a desirable feature for those seeking a hedge against inflation or financial instability. I don't know about you, but that is potentially what is happening in America. And of course, it also spits out some really good stuff. Firstly, Bitcoin is a finite supply, which of course we have a money printer and we just print money here in the United States, America. 
Second, Bitcoin can be used as a medium of exchange. So it actually has a purpose and a unit of account, much like fiat. And third, like this one, the blockchain tech underlying Bitcoin is a range of applications beyond just currency, uh, further enhances the value. For example, blockchain tech can be used for secure data storage, smart contracts, and DeFi. So if she wants to know these things, there's a great source you can use if you're a little bit stumbled. Just use ChatGPT. And finally, so we can get out of here, I just want to recommend a YouTube channel. It's David Lin. And uh, he was a former anchor over at uh, Kitco News. And he started up his own his own channel and it's really great. And the the, the most recent video we did, the stock, the stock that beat every recession in the last 40 years, <clears throat> I watch it, can't recommend it enough. I'll just give you a hint. Uh, the things that people buy in a recession are the things that they need every day, the staples. And he talked about how one of the big things to buy, Walmart as the stocks, gold, and I'll add in Bitcoin. So I'll link that video in the description. Go ahead and give him a follow and check him out. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive. So it would behoove you to sign up and subscribe. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one.